Hi, Vanessa Lesniak from the Pigeon Letters Design Team here to bring you yet another tutorial. So this one we're gonna have uh, paint a nice cloudy moonlit sky. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the backgrounds. Now I grabbed this bigger brush because it covers a big amount of area quicker. And I am using um, a color called Indigo. You can feel free to use any color that you want. Make sure it's dark. You can mix a little bit of blue in with some black to darken it up. Or you can just use plain black. Completely up to use. Pick, pick a nice, dark, dusky blue. And we are going to start. You don't have to use a big brush. I just use a big brush, as I said, because it um, helps me cover the area a lot quicker than if I use a smaller brush. So for the first and second layer, I am going to be using this big quill brush and um, I work my layers wet on wet. So you're going to see that I'm not going to let the paper dry. I'm going to go over this a second time with the same color um, just to darken that up a bit. Once I have that second layer down, again, I am going to still work wet on wet. However, I switched brushes. Right now I'm using a size 16 Pigeon Letters Studio brush. So I switched brushes because I want um, a darker concentration of color. Now the first brush I use, which is a, like a quill wash brush, it holds a lot of water, therefore it doesn't hold, it doesn't like disperse as much paint. It puts a lot of water on the paper. So using, switching to this brush, um, allows me to add more paint than I do water. It lets me control that water just a little bit more. Again, if you um, started off with a regular round brush instead of a big wash brush like I did, you may not need this step. So if you like the, um, the darkness that you achieved in the first or second layers, then feel free to skip this third layer. We are going to darken this piece even more at the end so we don't really have to worry about that too much here. Once you have this final background layer down, let it thoroughly dry before moving on to the next step. So as you can see, watercolors usually lighten, lighten when they dry. So it looks a bit lighter than it did when we first started laying the color down and we're gonna make that even darker as one of our last steps. So now I'm taking some Copic Opaque White. You can feel free to use any white medium you have such as acrylic or Dr. PH Martens, gouache, even white watercolor will work. I am grabbing a palette because I'm going to mix in some of that background color into the white in order to form some clouds. And we are going to steadily whiten the color as we work on the, on the clouds. But for now, we're going to mix a little bit of that indigo into our white just to make it a little bit more cloudy and a little bit more realistic. Um, usually when we're looking at clouds, they're not all the same color. They're not all white, you know, pillowy, puffy clouds. Even the most pillowy, puffy clouds have different shades of the sky color in it, right? So if you're looking at a light blue sky with um, billowy clouds, then it has a bit of that light blue bouncing off of the clouds. So that's what we are going to do now. So we're going to take that mixture and we're going to start mapping out our clouds. As you can see here, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to be, again, the very first layer. We are going to continue working in layers with this piece. So I am just laying down the foundation for the clouds using this grayish, bluish color that we mixed. Thank you. 
As my mixture is running out, this is the perfect time to add a little bit more color to the sky. So if, if you notice um, when I add in the second little mixture of the indigo and the white i had a little bit more white in this in it this time so every time you mix in from this point on we're going to start adding more white and again we are going to continue mapping out just a really rough map out of where you want your clouds to lay along your sky and i just want mine jutting out from the bottom of the page so once i'm done with that initial layer I'm going to go in and add a bit more white to that same mixture. So every time I go in, I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. And now I am again going over that same mixture. I'm not going over the, uh, the exact, you know, the exact edges and everything that I did that first time, but I'm going to add a little bit more um, texture and a little bit more variety to the clouds. So we're adding some in the middle. As you see, I started pretty high up on my page. So I want it to look like a couple of layers of clouds. And that's what we're doing here. I'm adding a bit more of that mixture to the middle. I am making sure that the very first time, so as soon as I put my brush down on the paper that's going to be the lightest spot because after that it starts mixing and mingling in with the colors underneath so i want to try to keep a little bit of that lightness in there you're also going to see that i'm going to add in a bit of the indigo the pure indigo it's going to mix in with the white because your paper is still wet and this works well because it mixes and mingles all the colors in together so when you're looking at clouds or even if you pull up a picture of a cloud, cloud, you'll see, or a cloud cover, right? You'll see that there are some areas where the sky is kind of peeking in, in between, and we want those areas a bit darker. So that's why I'm adding in just a couple of spots of indigo. And now I want to further define the clouds by adding in some really stark white areas so i'm using still the same 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 brush and i'm going in with the, the very tip and i'm adding in some really defined white areas and we are going to further define this uh in, a, in just a little bit after i add in that bright white i am going to again add in just a little touch of indigo to the very tops of them to kind of make them stand out a little more. I am also going to blend them in by cleaning off my brush and then wiping it on a paper towel and just kind of blending those edges out so that we don't have like really stark edges. So play around with your clouds, play around with the contrast of the dark against the light. Um, and just randomly add them in. Try not to think too much about it. Try not to get too much in your head about it. Just kind of let that creativity flow. Just add in the dark, add in the light, and all of this is still wet, so it's all gonna blend in together very nicely. Thank you. 
Once you are satisfied with these initial few layers of your clouds, let them completely dry before moving on to the next step. So for this next step, we are going to grab our white medium. And again, I'm still using the same brush and I am going to add some further definition to the clouds. Again, I am adding some really stark areas of white and I'm making the stark areas pretty big, right? We're not going in and putting in any fine details at the moment. Once I've added in a nice block, I'm going to clean my brush off and sort of tap it on a paper towel to get rid of any excess water and then blend the bottom out and you'll see it gives a nice you know a nice billowy texture to it and i'm going to repeat this same pattern um, over a couple of areas in the clouds so i'm adding in a block of stark white not a block right like a, a curve or an arc of <laughs> an arch of stark white i am cleaning my brush off blotting it on a paper towel or a t uh, you know a sponge or or whatever you have next to you to blot it off with and then blending out those edges to make them nice and soft
Now, once I am done with this and I am satisfied with the placement of everything and how billowy and cute they look, now I'm going to go in and add some fine details, some highlights. So I'm going in with a liner brush, which is a really tiny, tiny brush. Um, and I am taking a bit of that white on the very tip of the brush and I am adding a couple of highlights to the very, very tops of the clouds. And with that same brush, I'm going to do some areas you see out I unintentionally lay it down thicker than I should have, such as right here. So in order to fix that, I just go in and clean my brush off, dab it on a paper towel, and then just blend out those bottom edges. But if you um, don't do that, if you know, if you don't do that, if you you're laying it out precisely, then you won't need to blend in any of your edges. Um, but you know, if it's a little too thick for you, then blend out those edges. Um, as we did before so add a cup a couple of highlights don't add them just to the very you know top tier of clouds add them in the middle add them at the bottom and this gives uh, your clouds a feeling of, of depth so it, it makes it look like there is not just one big old cloud uh, it makes it look like there are several several clouds stacking in front of each other Once you are satisfied with the look of your clouds, let them completely dry before moving on to the next step. So the next step is going to draw is going to be to kind of like draw the silhouette or the, the shadow of the moon. Not even, not really the shadow because the moon is light. <laughs> so it's just going to be the hint of a moon up in the sky. So I'm taking my helix maker. Feel free to take any round object you have. You can also just freehand this. I am terrible at freehanding any sort of circular object. So I am not even going to attempt that. Um, and I'm going to give myself a guide. So after I do the half circle, we're doing like an ellipse. You can do a full moon if, if, you, if you please. I'm going to give myself a guide of where I want to take this moon to or how far out I want to so very 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 lightly I'm just sketching in the inner part of the crescent moon just very very lightly uh, we don't want that to show up at all in our painting so once you have that done then grab a brush I am using a size 8 round and um, what I am doing is first, I am with the very tip of my brush, I'm taking my white and I am outlining part of the moon. So this ink that I'm using uh, dries pretty quickly. And once it dries, it's really hard to kind of mix it and lift it up and things like that. So I'm going to clean my brush off. I'm going to dab it on a paper towel to get rid of any excess water and then keep that paper towel next to you in case you need to keep dabbing it. And I am going to uh, soften those edges. So as you can see here, I am just taking the white and I'm taking it section by section. I'm not doing the entire thing as at one at once and I am lining the outside of the crescent moon. Then I am cleaning off my brush, dabbing it on a paper towel to get rid of excess water, and then softening those edges.
once I have all of the edges done, I want to bring some of that white out a little. I don't want it all to just be concentrated on the edge. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit more white, but since the paper is wet, it's not going to be as stark white as on the, on the edges, which is a good thing. It is what I want. So I'm going to add the white and I am going to bring it down a little further. And um, you can keep playing with this until you are satisfied with how far down you want that white. Once you are satisfied with it, go in with a clean wet brush or a damp brush and keep bringing that water out so that you can have a nice blend on your crescent moon. Once you are satisfied with it, let it completely dry. I'm gonna speed mine along by drying it. And uh, then we'll move on to the next part. And the next part is darkening the sky up a little bit. So I'm gonna go right back into that indigo and right back into my bigger round brush. And I am going to darken that sky. So when you get close to the clouds, just be a little bit careful. You don't have to go directly up against the clouds. Um, but uh, just try to be careful so that you don't hit too much of the white. If you do, that's okay. It'll just give it a nice, you know, billowy texture on the edges. But since we did brighten the edges of those clouds, we're going to try really hard to kind of work our way, our way around those billowy edges. And I'm going to continue adding this um, indigo to the sky just to keep darkening it, darkening it up. When I get close to the moon, we're going to leave the inner part of the crescent alone until the very end. I'm going to go completely around the entire moon before heading back into that inner part of the crescent. Okay, once we have reached the inner part of the crescent moon, I am going to um, continue adding a little, just a little bit of indigo into that inner crescent of the moon. And if you see here, I am just making that crescent shape with the indigo. And try not to press hard like I did here because you don't want to lift up the paint underneath. So have a, a lighter hand than I do. And once you have a nice shape to that inner crescent, what you're going to do is clean your brush off, dab it against a paper towel, and wet with just plain water the inside of that moon. So we're going to pull some of that indigo in with just water. And by just adding water instead of more indigo, it's going to give you that fading effect. So your moon, the light from the moon is just kind of fading out into the night sky. So here's a little tip. If the outer part of the moon, so uh, where we just added more indigo, if that is still wet, 
don't add water all the way to the very edges of the moon because it's going to the indigo from the sky is going to bleed into it after this i'm just adding a couple of little touches i'm adding a little bit more indigo to the inside um, i just wanted to give it a more natural feel to it so i'm just adding a bit more indigo and just kind of letting that white fade into the indigo and when you're done with this let it completely dry Now, once your moon has completely dried, this is going to be the best part, and the best part is adding in the stars. So I'm going to take my little liner brush, I'm going to dip it very heavily into my white, and I am going to just splatter those stars onto my paper. And that is all. That is, that is our uh, tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one.